Gateman's. This is a little bit of a guitar review, a little rundown. Um, some of you are going to go, some of you who know something about guitars will go, that strap looks weird. It was based on a strap, it's based on a vintage strap. That is a PRS. Those of you who do know will know, and this is a PRS Silver Sky, the John Mayer signature. And it is the SE edition, so it is a affordable range of PRS guitars. PRS, one of the best guitar brands on the face of the planet, next to Gibson, Bender, Gresh, and the high end of Banners, high end Jacksons. And this guitar came with a free gig bag, which was awesome. Um, what else do you get in the gig bag? You get a little thing to keep your headrest in one place. It's actually sculpted. It is well padded. Um, also, has a pocket in the back. Has a coat hanger on it, so you can hang it up. If you're a tour musician and you want to take it with you, um, and you want to keep it in your hotel room. Also, you get the trim arm is removable, but you get a little adjuster here and your Allen key. Normally you always get an Allen key, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a really well-made bag, nice and padded. Um, probably could do with some enforcement in there, like um, there was one that Fender brought out uh, a while ago, which is pretty good. It was, you paid a pretty penny for it, but this is kind of like a really nice bag. It's like sort of bag, gig bag that you would pay upwards of 70 to 80 pounds for. So it's really, really good quality bag. It's got adjustable straps. And it's got handles on there as well for loading and loading from vans if you are gigging. Um, you get this beautiful reverse three on three headstock. So you get your three on three. So that means if you haven't figured it out, three tuners aside, it's beautiful stylized headstock. And I can hear some of you saying that no, the Gibson have three on three headstocks. And I'm like, just copying Gibson and stuck it on a strap. No, this is completely unique. Um, right down from the pickups, which we'll talk about later on. And we'll talk about the fit finish and all the woods that have gone into this and the vintage specs that were on this. Because these are vintage spec pickups. These are not vintage pickups, they are vintage spec. For that 63 to 65 era. So we're going to get talking about that. We're going to be playing clean into my little Black Star Debut 10E amp. And we're going to be starting from the bridge position. Bridge being here. And the neck being here, obviously. Now the, the toggle switch on this is really nice. It's got a nice feel to it. It's not too round. It doesn't come off in your hand really well. The, the knobs, they might not look pretty, but they function. They're made of a good durable plastic and they have a nice smooth action to them. There's no clunking or clicking. Um, retro style tuning machines, tuning machines being these bits. Now some of you might say those tuning pegs look like they don't won't hold up to much. It's just a textured plastic. It's a Again, it's a really durable plastic. Um, they're, granted, they're not um, the full market, like full on, full thoroughbred Silver Sky um, spec, with the one that costs over 2,000 pounds with the lock and tuners. 
SE models are like the more affordable. So this came in about £799 instead of two to three grand. Um, so that is a bahugin. Um, for PRS, the, their affordable ranges range between four to four, four, £400 to just under £1,000 for the SE ranges because the, the amount of goodies they put in these guitars is second to none. They are up there with a high-end Epiphone. Um, and if you know enough about high-end Epiphones, some of them are better than some Gibsons. So um, some might say that's a bold statement, but you know, and high-end Epiphones are a lot better than high-end Squires. I am not bashing Squires. Squire makes some fantastic guitars. Me personally, I wouldn't gig a guitar, uh, a Squire, but I was quite happy to play one. I have a Squire Jaguar fin uh, classic vibe in my collection. Um, I also have a couple of Jaddy and Rockabilly guitars as well, and as well, I, I think I mentioned before, I have a Bazooki, something completely different. But I'll probably, I will be doing a video going through all the different types of guitars and different sounds, so you guys can appreciate if you do want to get into guitar, it does matter. Woods matter. Pickups matter. And obviously, comfort matters when playing guitar. Um, but yeah, we're going to get some sounds out of this, starting from that bridge position. Um, there is no delay or reverb activated at this moment in time. I'll talk about what the things are. So you got six three five pickups, which are sixty three um sixty five range pickups, which are John something that John may have wanted on these guitars, as well as on the um full on full thoroughbred signature series. <laughs> amount of twangs, not too <laughs> sounds thin and twangy without sounding anemic which is good <laughs> demonstration of songs or anything like that on this, it's just going through demos, no, just going for that legendary Strasdorf quack. So we've gone from a good amount of spank and twang to a good amount of quack, which is... Thank you. 
for that scary kind of like reggae kind of funk kind of solo but it sounds funky as hell. On to the middle pickup I'll talk about what the settings why it matters where the switch is in a minute because you go from bridge bridge and middle middle so bridge is position one position two position three position four position five so bridge bridge and middle 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 and neck Hence the reason why the effect is five positions. So now we're on the middle one. punch that you get from being in a middle position it doesn't give it a when when you've got a quack it's called like a, a scoop it scoops the mid-range of the frequency so it gives it a little quack so when you're in that position you get that we're in the middle gives it a more mid-range push and so you get Thank you. 
in that kind of middle and neck position there and you get more warm for that more <laughs> to jazzy, more warmer, blue, deeper blues, kind of finger picky, kind of classical sort of styles. Mm -hmm. More bass heavy, bass mid heavy. Um, regular viewers of the channel taking the dog Ted for a walk so gonna go over the specs not gonna do us like a strip down and show you what's in the inside what the guts are but uh, yeah these beautiful vintage tuners also um says this is built by Cortec Musical Instruments Company Limited Indonesia under license for PRS guitars with the serial number there. Um, so PRS and Cortec. I mean, Cortec make a lot of guitars for a lot of companies, but when it comes to PRS, uh, when it comes to the uh, when they're making stuff for stuff like PRS or like the Gresh's Streamliner range and stuff like that. What they'll tend to do, and um, this is in Indonesia. It's an Indonesian guitar. Indonesian guitars are fucking amazing. Indonesian woodwork is really good. Um, yeah, when it comes to them making stuff for like Fender, Gresh, PRS, they have their own dedicated um, factories that have all all the requirements from the manufacturers in there. So PRS will send them pre-approved woods, electronics, um, materials, tuners. The only things you'll probably find that are standard Cortec in there will probably be the screws and the um, scratch and back plates. Everything else will be regulation PRS. Um, I had the pleasure of trying a um, normal Silver Sky in guitar guitar in the shop where I bought this um, in Newcastle. Also, if you're ever in Newcastle and you fancy a bite to eat and you're in Eldon Square, 
I recommend tortilla. And it was a really nice Subway style Mexican. Really nice. We popped in there yesterday and it was absolutely delightful. Um, I really recommend it. I had the quesadillas and I had a burrito. And it is literally like Subway. You make it with the fillings you want. Um, although, call tortilla. It doesn't sell tortillas or fajitas. I don't know. But uh, yeah, if you're ever in Newcastle in the UK, go check that out. Also, they do have a Five Guys and a Taco Bell in Newcastle as well. And Bold in a town um, just down the road from where we live um, has a Tim Hortons. So if you're a visiting Canadian or American and you're up this end of the woods, there are a McDonald's, Burger Kings, and there's also Five Guys and a Tim Hortons. But there are other really tasty food places to go. Also recommend the Stack and Seaburn here in Sunderland. Some really nice eateries in there. Um, Chapo's Tacos is a nice Mexican. Um, we do like our Mexican. They're a nice place that sells crepes in the Alden Square shopping centre as well in Newcastle. But, so yeah, I mentioned the 635 pickups, which are spec and John Mayer um, himself said he wanted to have as close to the spec pickups, as close to the exact same pickups that are in his signature model that cost, over, cost nearly three grand. So these retail um, anywhere between 680 to 799 pounds. It depends on the cost of shipping at the time of the, the shop's purchases, and plus there is like your VAT on top. Um, it is an absolutely beautiful guitar. You get this roasted effect maple neck with a matte finish, nice satin matte finish. It comes in uh, two other colors, um, stone blue and uh, forest green but you get this beautiful one that stood out most to me, or this beautiful dragon fruit. I know it looks more like a, like a raspberry coolie sort of color. It is a lovely color, beautiful feeling guitar. It's a nice belly contour here. It's got all the same adornments you would find on the more expensive model, but you've got more affordable pots and wiring in there to bring the price down. It's a popular body instead of um, older, which means it's that bit lighter. Um, popular is a more available wood, which also brings the price down a bit. Um, it's not a rubbish wood, it's a really good resonant wood. This thing holds notes like there's no tomorrow. It's your signature PRS bird inlays for the fret markers. Um, the truss rod cover is a like a box standard truss rod cover there. If you're wondering what the truss rod does, it adjusts the pitch of the neck. So because obviously wooden guitars, wood shrinks and expands in ranges of temperatures and humidities. So you, you can adjust the truss rod, it's a long carbon rod, carbon and metal rod that runs on the inside of the neck and it allows for any movement forward and back as the wood shrinks and expands. Also with uh, rosewood and ebony and um, power furrow fretboards, fretboard being the thing with the frets on, um, you, you, you might get counter shrinkage and also you get the string pulls. So you get, um, Products like, hang on, two seconds, I can just reach it. Like lemon oil, and you put squirt some onto a piece of tissue or straight onto the neck when you're changing strings every once in a while, and it keeps the fretboard nice and hydrated. Also gives it, gives it a nice little feel to it as well. As I said, the fret ends, uh, um, Nicely rounded off, 
and has a nice C-shaped neck. It is an eight and a half radius fretboard. What that means is if you take the fretboard off, um, it would form the edge of a seven and a half inch circle, an eight and a half inch circle. And for the full blooded 3,000 pound model, it's a seven and a half, so it'd be a more of a smaller circle. Traditionally, normal modern day guitars are anywhere between nine to um, nine to 12, the compound radius is where the radius actually changes from flatter to rounder. So nine to 14 radiuses, especially the more strings you get, the flatter the flat fretboard is. But there's always that curve. What that does is helps with resonance and also helps with um, string vibration because all strings have to be a minimum distance away from the fretboard for comfort. All depends on the player. You can adjust the height, usually at the bridge. Some acoustics, um, the um, action is higher, sometimes it's lower. Um, it all depends on your preferences. Most lap steels and more like what I would call a kumbaya guitar where you're encouraged to play you know, like your cowboy chords, your C, E's, G's, A's and all that kind of, these sort of like chords here, like country and western chords, where you're playing between here and here, it gets, the action gets higher away from, action is just measurement of the strings away from the body and the neck. Um, I believe this is a 25 inch scale length, which is a measurement from the bridge to the nut at the top. Um, rosewood is a nice wood. The one I, the one I played the full blooded um, three grand version, I don't own a three grand version, it'd be nice because they're nice guitars. It, it is a different playing experience with around the neck. It chords, you've got to. Um, it's weird how the difference is because usually the flatter the neck the faster your fingers can move up and down the finger block because you can tap them in but you've got to accommodate for the curve um, on a more rounded fretboard but that's more traditional vintage spec um, yeah I, I really dig this guitar um, Really, really nice. You get this three ply um, fretboard. If you can see, it's white, black, white on the thing. It's three ply because it's three levels. It is a really nice, and you get this snazzy SE John Mayer back plate on the neck. It is a bolt on neck. Was it bolt on neck? Mean it means it's got four screws in holding the neck in place. Set neck. It's glued in, and a through body means the neck goes through the body, and then your sides just put on. And you'll find that more on something like a Flying V, as in like a Gibson Flying V, or an Explorer type guitar, or um, Explorers and the old um, heavy metal, like Randy Rhodes style stuff and that. Uh, yeah, but every player has a preference to how they like. I like different types of neck, to be honest. I've got no preference. You get this comfort carve here, which is really nice for if you are a heavy shredder and you want to get in, you can get your little finger right up to that last fret. I think this is a 22 fret, so 15, 17, 19, 20, 21 fret guitar. Uh, doesn't make much difference unless you are in Dragon Force because Herman Lee has a 27 fret guitar and he plays like a wizard on speed. It's amazing to watch um, and listen to. Um, yeah, this is an absolutely stunning guitar.
it's a joy to play. Like I said, I will be doing a side-to-side -side comparison from different guitars so you can hear what different guitars do. What's the difference between a semi-acoustic, something like my Epiphone Olympic Master Built. It's a lovely little jazz box. Uh, to something that's all single coils like this. To something that uses humbuckers and humbucker inspired pickups like my Gresh. But yeah, all, all in total, 799 and that's a little bit of payment plan with a big chunk of it paid by savings and birthday money which is always good and you get a free bag with it there's not many brands will give you a free bag with a guitar unless you're spending over a few thousand pounds this to say that i mean i do like this this headstock is thing Normally, um, the strat style guitars, you get that traditional Fender style headstock where it droops round. Sometimes I find sometimes the better they sound, the bigger the headstock and the bigger headstocks don't really speak to me that much. Um, I mean, I like the Jaguar because I like the sound and the headstock's not too oversized for me. So. For Fender wise, I prefer something with a smaller headstock, like a Jaguar or um, actually Jaguars can have quite a big headstock on them, on something like a Telecaster. So it's nice, small, it looks nicer, which is what you'd call a six aside, six astride um, headstock. So you have all six tuning pegs down on one side. And I'll probably get into other things as to why different manufacturers do different things with their guitars. And does it make too much difference? What makes differences? What doesn't make differences? And etc. I mean, this is, this is as close to a thousand plus pound Fender as you can get without spending out a thousand plus pounds. That's... My opinion and it's also the opinion of other people that have tried these and it says like it's it's as close to a high-end made in mexico or a low-end american um fender strat as you're gonna get for the price range which is really good um there's going to be a lot of fender fans saying no fender's better it's tomato tomato it's it's as close as you're going to get to a Fender Strat without being a Fender Strat. And it does its own thing as well, so it's beautiful. Absolutely stunning guitar. Um, and the difference between a Rosewood, Powell, a Rosewood or Powell Furrow fretboard or an Ebony fretboard compared to a natural maple fretboard is maple's a softer wood, so its resonance is different. So realistically it's down to the player noticing the difference rather than the listener um because as a player you notice differences so but the trick is not to get offended when people say all oh, your guitars sound the same because when you do play them back to back to them they actually notice they go actually they do sound different you get the difference but you have to have them all played back to back to get that difference which is why i'm going to do the video for it and this has been a very long video. But yeah, Paul, PRS makes some excellent guitars. Um, yeah, enough said. That's the fit finish. I mean, these these are good quality pots in there as well. These are gigable. This is this this is this is worthy of a live show. I mean, in like as in like a big big name band could quite happily I, I would quite happily tour with something of this quality I mean I'm not a touring musician I'm not a gigging musician I just noodle and play around and make up my own stuff and do YouTube videos um, yeah I really like this and when these come in from Indonesia, 
they go to PRS, they get quality checked by PRS to make sure they are all to standard, to the standard that PRS are happy with. PRS America to get standard with. And then when they get shipped off to somewhere like Sweetwater or Guitar Guitar, uh, so like sh guitar shops here in the UK, the shops will then do their own quality checks to make sure they're happy with what they're selling. Um, so yes, when you go to buy a new guitar, it has been touched by other people. It's, unless you're ordering from the manufacturer, it has been handled by other people other than the manufacturers. And if I ever win the lottery, I would love to own a private stock PRS. I'd like a private stock Gibson as well, but um, private stock PRS, unique words, beautiful guitars, really special. I mean, they cost really nice. I may do a video where we look at like all the PRS stuff, and um, yeah, I really love this brand. I really love Gresh as well, and Epiphone. Uh, you knock it out of the park. Yeah, this has been I've been Alex. <laughs> if you've if you've stayed around to listen to me talk about this thing, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I am a guitar nerd, to say the least. Um, I'm an I'm a I'm a nerd when it comes to Lego and stuff, but um, when it comes to working out and playing guitar, that's my kind of like my grounding for my autism. So, yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Yes, I'm gonna wrap up here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed me twittering on about this thing. Um, this beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, leave a comment down below if you would like. Uh, I'll probably put a, I'll pop a link down below for PRS's website as well as Guitar Guitars, so you can go check them out. Um, I don't think they ship abroad, hence the reason why I'll put the PRS link down below. Um, I'll put a link for PRS's channel and Guitar Guitars channel down below as well for this. If you are interested, uh, if you live in the UK, um, you might be lucky enough to have a guitar guitar near to you. If not, PMT are always a good brand uh, shop to go to as well. But yeah. Always good. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to... Hey, Ted. Talk about Ted, talk about Ted. Ted, 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 Ted. This is Ted. So, I always do a little introduction with Ted. So, if you're new to the channel, this is Ted. Hands up. Little white bundle of cuddles, isn't it, mate? Mwah. Yeah, so I'm going to wrap up here. Hit the like, subscribe, notification bell so you're notified when new videos are up and coming. And if there's anything else you want to look at, like from Lego builds to D&D to comic books to toy reviews, Click on my little bunny icon down below next to where it says um, geek stuff and uh, it'll take you to a back library unless something comes up either here somewhere or in the suggested views down there. So, sniff my arm. Um, what was I? Yes. So, either something comes up in the suggested views column, then I'm going to allow my face to go in the middle so you can see the two things, you can see my beautiful face. So beautiful. Um, not as beautiful, not as beautiful as this face here. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. You've been awesome. Live long and prosper. To all of one, may the force be with you. This was the channel you were looking for, and you will subscribe. Catch you next time, Geeklings. Peace. <laughs>